All right, so I had somebody send me a picture online of a human hand with what looks like webbing between the fingers. And supposedly this is evidence for evolution because this is supposed to be a throwback to our amphibian-like ancestors and our fish-like ancestors and basically things that have webbing on their hands while they're an adult. Um, but is this really the case? And the answer is no. I mean, this is really ridiculous and to me, as somebody who has studied a lot of biology, I think this really shows that this is nothing more than tabloid journalism. I mean, I cannot picture any... It would be very, very difficult for me to picture a professional biologist during a college biology class saying, oh, well, this is evidence for evolution, this is evidence for our fish-like ancestors. It would be hard for me to picture that. I mean, it's so ridiculous that somebody would make an argument like this. And the reason is, during human... De this is normal, uh, basically. It's not normal for a person to keep webbing it while they're an adult, which I kind of really wonder why wasn't the webbing removed. So I do question whether or not these pictures are real, but the fact it's of somebody being born with webbing on their hands doesn't really surprise me because during normal human development, um, on the hand you have basically what look like webs. So these are basically flaps of skin between the fingers that are just there during the developmental process. Um, basically the hand kind of spreads out. <sighs> Trying to explain this, I, I think of it like a pancake. And then the fingers develop in that process. And then the, this bit of skin that's left in between the fingers is taken care of by something called apoptosis. So it's basically programmed cell death. So everybody has webbing during a certain stage of development. But for some people, it doesn't quite work right, um, the apoptosis, and the webbing end up stays. So even though the cells were supposed to commit programmed suicide, uh, apoptosis, the, that process ends up not working properly. So the webbing ends up staying. Um, different other parts of your body have apoptosis as part of their normal development as well. And I just think this is kind of, it's so shallow that somebody would try to use this as evidence for evolution because there's all kinds of birth defects out there that happen. I mean, every once in a while you get a two-headed calf or a two-headed snake or whatever. Um, I remember seeing a picture of a cat that was born with one eye, so it looked like a cyclops online. Um, and the cat actually lived for about an hour before dying, unfortunately, um, which is kind of sad. And honestly, no evolutionist in the world in, who's in their right mind is going to argue that the cat evolved from Homer Cyclops or something like that. Then I also remember a picture of a little girl from India who was born with four arms and four legs. Um, obviously, the extra limbs did not work properly, but to the Hindus in India, they viewed her as being the reincarnation of one of their deities. So, all this is is kind of a superficial, this is a birth defect that has a superficial resemblance to our alleged, um, our alleged animal ancestors. Just like to the Hindus, there was a there was a little girl who had some extra limbs, so they viewed her as being the reincarnation of a deity because she had this super, very superficial resemblance to a certain aspect of that deity. Um, but at the end of the day, that's all this is. Is every once in a while you'll see something that is remote that remotely looks like a tail, or looks you have this kind of superficial webbing between a person's hand. And evolutionists will say, oh, this is an atavism, this is a throwback to our evolutionary past. But that's really not what's happening. Um, you can't pick and choose which birth defects you like and say, well, these birth defects that just happen uh, by coincidence to have this superficial resemblance to what we believe in the religion of evolution, um, we're going to take these and use these as evidence for evolution, and these other birth defects, where you have like a two-headed calf or whatever, or a dude with three nipples, um, we're going to take these and say, well, these aren't evidence for evolution. I mean, you can't say, you can't just take a birth defect and say, well, because you had a birth defect that caused this to happen, that's, an, that's evidence that you had an ancestor that looked like that, because they're totally inconsistent about it. 
It's like, you know what, if you're going to say that this webbing between a person's hand is evidence that we had an ancestor with webbing, and you're going to use that logic consistently, if you're going to be consistent within your worldview, then you would have to say that two-headed calf is evidence that cows had a two-headed ancestor, or that dude with three nipples is evidence that humans evolved from a creature with three nipples. Come on, uh, let's 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 be reasonable here. Let's not let's stop with these let's stop with these stupid arguments and have a real conversation. Because um, at at the end of the day, that's what this is. This is really this is a really 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 poor argument. Um, and I want to talk about the tails again for a minute. Um, I talked about tails in previous videos, but every once in a while. You hear a story on Talk Origins or some other evolutionist propaganda website, and they'll talk about a human being that was born with a tail. Um, that's not what's going on here. Let me read you a quote. All right, so this quote is originally from Human Embryology and Teratology, second edition by I'm going to pronounce. I hope I'm pronouncing this name properly by Wiley and Lease, 1996, page 93. And I'm quoting a quote, and people don't like that, they can just deal with it. Rarely a caudal appendage is found at birth. Such structures are of varied origin. Some are teratomata. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's a type of tumor. They practically never contain skeletal elements are in no, and are in no sense tails. Projections that contain skeletal elements are caused by dorsal bending of the coccyx. That's a tailbone for those of you who don't know. Do not contain more vertebrae than normal and have nothing to do with atavism and again for those of you who don't know atavism is a throwback to our evolutionary past so it'd be like if a person was born with gills since we had an ancestor that was a fish actually we have quite a few that were fish but if you were to find a person that was born with gills in an evolutionist would view that as atavism they view that as a throwback to our evolutionary past we never find anything like that. We don't find human beings born with tails either, according to the experts who actually know what they're talking about and aren't some guy living in their mother's basement on Talk Origins. <sighs> Sorry, that was a little rude, but you gotta. I'm calling a spade a spade here. Not that I don't live in my mom's house. Eh, my mom's a good cook, so why not? And I'm going to college. So, anyway. This isn't evidence for evolution. This is in no sense evidence for evolution. Um, the only way this is evidence for evolution is, oh, well, evolutionists imagined that we had a fish-like ancestor. And since webbed hands kind of superficially look like a fish or a, a fish or an amphibian's hand, um, if you can call a fish's fin a hand, um, all it is is this vague superficial resemblance. That's all it is. The same with these alleged tails. You basically have what's sometimes a tumor, and they're like, oh, that tumor is in the right place to have a tail. That means it's a tail. Um, no, it's not a tail, except in the imaginations of evolutionists. Every once in a while, you have similar structure up here in other places of the body, but nobody thinks that we once upon a time had a tail coming out of our arm. Um... So anyway, thank you for thank you for your time. Thank you for watching my video. And for those of you who are unbelievers uh, and maybe very pro evolution, thank you for putting up with my sarcasm. Um, I hope everybody has a good day. I hope everybody has enjoyed your Valentine's season. You know, I kind of actually am enjoying being single right now, so. Um, I enjoy just eating some chocolate this time. So anyway, everybody, thank you for your time. Check out my websites. Check out greenslug.com. Remember, slug is spelled with two Gs. That's my blog. And also check out blueslug.com. Slug, again, is spelled with two Gs. Uh, blueslug.com is my new science search engine that I've designed and I really am trying to promote. Everybody go check it out. If you're a science major or if you're a researcher, I think in a lot of ways this has come out to be better than Google Scholar. I don't have all the bells and whistles and all the features of Google Scholar, but I think in a lot of ways it's a lot more user-friendly and it's a lot more enjoyable to use. Uh, so go there, click on whichever custom search engine that you that's appropriate for you. Remember, there's several on the website. Go check it out. Uh, thank you for your time. This is Greg, out.